up hello today's video is a comparison discussion video because I recently just finished reading uh, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince for I don't know like the 10th time or something because some days you know how you just have those moments where only reading Harry Potter is gonna fix how you're feeling that's been happening to me at the end of last semester. So I've been slowly, sort of very casually um, reading it, got the copy out of the library here from school. And one of the first things I noticed was how much smaller it was and also how many more pages it was than the copy that I own. As I started to read it, it became clear that this experience in reading was gonna be a little bit different from all of the other times that I have read my copy over and over. So I was talking to Rebecca while I was reading this book and I was saying, um, this is a really interesting experience because this is conjuring all of the same um, memories and thoughts and images that it always has because it's the same text um, as it does when I read the copy that I own. However, it's just a little bit different and I can't really put my finger on why. And so I was trying to figure it out and started to think of the reasons that those differences might be occurring. One of the biggest things that everybody thinks of um, in the difference between the US and the UK editions is the spelling and the syntax. Um, the words are spelled differently um, based on the way that you're taught to spell English and then the, the syntax and the phrases that get used. There are a lot of phrases and colloquialisms in British English that we don't use in the United States. Um, and if we do, we use them very sparingly and sometimes people get a little tripped up. I'm doing a lot of reading for my graduate program here anyway, and so I'm much more accustomed now to seeing words that I would traditionally see have a Z or a Z in them, um, and here they're spelled with an S. And so things like that weren't weren't as much of an issue. A lot of a lot of the colloquialisms were were brought over. Um, phrases that get used over here were included, so I sort of knew a little bit about that. But the only thing that really sort of threw me off was the word pajamas, which here in the UK is spelled with a Y in the beginning. So every time I look at it, no matter what, I always say it pyjamas, and then I have to think to myself it's actually pajamas, 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 however you want to say it. Secondly, the book is a different length overall. The version that I have is the US Scholastic published edition. It's green, it's hardcover, um, it's beautiful, the illustrations are gorgeous. And the edition that I read here that I got out of the library um, was the, I believe, the adult Bloomsbury publication. It's my understanding that they are published both sort of children's versions and adult versions here. Um, and I was reading this one, which is much darker um, and much more sort of minimalist. The version that I read had more pages and the pages were smaller. So when I was holding the book and sort of flipping the pages as I went and looking at the differences on, on either side of the spine, it was harder to tell where I was in the story because there were more pages that I had already turned and fewer left to go or the opposite when events that were taking place in the plot were happening. And if you have made it after all this time and you have somehow been able to avoid all spoilers of the plot of Half-Blood Prince. Wow, that's impressive. But just so you know, this is definitely a spoiler that I am about to say. So if you want to just ignore this particular section, that would be fine. So for instance, when Harry and Ginny kiss, I know about in the text how after how many pages when I hold the book where that should happen and so I was sort of sitting there and I was like this hasn't this hasn't happened yet and I've definitely read through enough pages like this should be coming soon and this should be coming soon and this part of the story should be happening and that part of the story should be happening and they should be leaving for the cave soon enough and it, everything was very thrown off because the weight of of the book was different there I hadn't turned enough pages to really sort of get to where I thought I was gonna be. And I think most notably, the biggest difference with this is the font is different. Um, it's a much more serious font. Um, the font in the, the Scholastic version is a little more mystical. Um, I think it's, I mean, it's a very, it's prudent, very functional font, but um, this is just very standard serif typeface. There are no chapter illustrations. Um, and something that I wound up really missing in this version was the little tiny stars that come next to all of the page numbers at the top and the bottom of the, the chapter titles and the, and the page numbers and everything. Um, those really, I feel like they sort of make the magic for me. They remind you as you're reading that you're in this magical world. And so those weren't there. The beautiful chapter illustrations that are in the Scholastic versions were missing. And I just sort of felt that, like I said before, I conjured the same images in my head of what this particular world for me looks like with every reading, no matter what. And all of those images did come back. But the 
the fact that I would think maybe it was I was reading the adult version or whatever, maybe just the way that the text was presented made this this reading of it feel a little colder. And so I, I didn't feel the same draw to the plot and the same draw to all of those images as I did whenever I've, I've read this classic version. It also in particular made the cave scene at the very end when they go to the cave and Dumbledore is drinking the poison potion and he's screaming and Harry is having to continue to forcibly give that to him. That was made so much more adult and so much scarier I feel like just by by dint of having that font be more, I don't want to say harsh, but it was, it was, it felt colder and it felt more realistic and it was very, it was a very different reading of those couple chapters when they come back and they take the brooms and, and they land on the astronomy tower and his death definitely felt colder than it did the first time or any of the times I've read the book before just because of the way that it looked on the page and, and what an effect that can have on the way that you view reading and a story sort of came to mind for me. And so I've been thinking a lot about experiencing things and experiencing stories and books, um, particularly with this whole Kindle debate that rages in my head. A couple of my colleagues in my class here have Kindles and they love them because they're also from different countries that not the UK. And they said it was just so much easier for me than bringing all of my books with me or, or buying books. I just download them and, and I'd, it's less to carry, which all makes sense to me. Um, but I, I feel like your experience with a story and with a book in particular can be very much affected. Um, as I learned through this reading, um, by the version that you're reading and also just by the physicality of what you're reading. So I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, in the comments, let me know if if you've done this thing that I have where you've read a book, you've read two different versions of the same book. I mean, I own three copies of Little Women and I've never sort of experienced this difference in in experience with the story as I have with Harry Potter. But let me know if you if you have like a Kindle or something and you have read something on a Kindle that you've also read um, a physical copy of and how, how that medium has changed your experience. Let me know in the comments. I think that would be a really interesting conversation. As always, thanks for watching. Anything you wanna know about us here is probably down in the Vunderbar. Um, I hope you're having lovely weeks and lovely lives and we will see you very soon.